We are impressed when we see on the telly a long since deceased person making a speech while they're still alive. The person may be dead, but their words come alive. Now, I think Martin Luther King is a good example of this in his I Have a Dream speech in 1968. I think that that dream came true when President Obama was elected. Well, it's the Holy Spirit who brings alive the words of Jesus in the Bible and makes them relevant in the here and now. In the Mass, for instance, we ask the Holy Spirit to sanctify the bread and wine so that they become for us today Christ's body and blood. The Holy Spirit will keep us from stagnating spiritually where we put up barriers to renewal. We're afraid of taking risks, scared of entering uncharted waters. In today's Gospel, Jesus breathed on the Apostles. We often use the same language in other areas of our lives when things begin to stand, begin as a standstill. We breathe new life into a situation, we say. In the Pentecost hymn we sing, Breathe on me, breath of God, and fill me with life anew. The Holy Father said last year, I need the constant outpouring of the Holy Spirit if my spiritual life is not to seize up. Stagnation is aligned with sin. We could get stuck in the rut of sin, big or small. For instance, we can be so used to swearing that it becomes part and parcel of who we are, part of our personality. I know people whose every second word is a swear word. It doesn't trouble them anymore. But the Holy Spirit keeps prompting us to change. The coming of the Holy Spirit at Pentecost was accompanied by extraordinary phenomena. His influence, however, is not limited to these things. A true sign of the Spirit's anointing is when we come to a new awareness of God's love for us. St. Paul, in his letter to the Romans, says, The love of God has been poured into our hearts through the Holy Spirit, but it doesn't end there. We're not navel gazers. That same love has to flow out of those same hearts into our hands and feet and be lived out in everyday life. The word has to become enfleshed in our very being. This applies to every Christian. The late Cardinal Suenens, quite a charismatic figure in his day, described what the church might be like if the Holy Spirit is not given free reign, if he's kept at bay. He says... Without the Holy Spirit, God tends to be distant. Christ stays in the past. The gospel is a dead letter. The church is just another institution among many. Attendance at mass becomes wearisome. Morality is reduced to a slavish adherence to rules and regulations. But on the other hand, with the Holy Spirit, God is near. Christ is in the present. The gospel becomes alive. The church is a faithful community, not just another organisation. With the Holy Spirit, living morally is about inner transformation, not just outwardly keeping rules. With the Holy Spirit, I have inner peace, even in the midst of turmoil. With this in mind, we pray all the more earnestly. Come, Holy Spirit, fill the hearts of your faithful and enkindle in them the fire of your divine love. Send forth your spirit and renew the face of the earth. Thank you for listening. God bless you all. Oh.